How do? Chain Grave Games, back again for an unboxing. And I'll be unboxing today the new Tyranid Norn Emissary. Or Norn Assimilator, because it's you know it's a it's a, a, a two model build pretty much. Uh well not two model build. You can it, it, you can build two different models out of this kit. But yeah, I'll probably be building myself a Norn Emissary because I think it looks bloody cool. Let's have a quick look at the back of it. So there's your Norn Assimilator. With the, uh... These are actually the, uh, what do you call it? The harpoons, apparently, according to, uh, what I've seen. And these are just claws, even though they're designed so differently. You'd think these are the harpoons. Um... But yeah. The new Norn Assimilator, or Emissary. So... Let's get into it, shall we? Um, find my scalpel. Oh, and cut, cut across there. Oh, there we go. Yeah, there we go. Oh, there's your uh, your instructions. Oh wait! Oh god! It's going everywhere. These are your instructions for your non emissary, but it will have the instructions for the assimilator as well. So yeah, there you go. Emissary and assimilator. And here are your sprues. So you've got this uh, sprue, which has been. Yeah, it's it's three different sprues. Uh, this one's just been obviously split off. Um, this seems to be all your legs, uh, your your rending claws, uh, sorry, your scything talons, uh, the the bottom of the body. Uh, no tail. That's a bit of the tail there. Um, there, your rending claws. Um, that is. Right, and there you got two different small torso bits. I'm not sure what the point in the difference is. I'll have to look into that. Um, oh, there's your tail section. Uh, I think that's the tail section used for the assimilator. And then the tail section used for the emissary is that one for some reason. Not sure why. Um, but yeah, that's that's one of the sprues. Uh, the other sprue is this one, where you'll be getting, uh, that's your, your scenic base, and that is as well. Then these are the, the, the claws, which aren't harpoons, but apparently are harpoons, because they're harpoons, but less said. These are some little shoulder, uh, shoulder uh, claws that is for the assimilator, as for, as is that, so that's for the assimilator, because he doesn't have the, uh, the, the big xenomorph style head. Uh, well, she, he, yeah, it's Tyranid. Um, and then these are bits of that. That's the known assimilator's head. Uh, and this is the known emissary's head. Uh, the big one with that. Uh, the arms. There's actually an extra section that you put in the arms for the assimilator, uh, the emissary. Which is a bit strange because if you uh let me let me try and find it quickly. Right. Here we go. Uh this is the non emissary. And he's got a, a, like uh on his scything talons, they're extended slightly, but they're not on the assimilator for some reason. Cause look, they're extended slightly. Almost kinda like big mantis arms. Uh a little bit like the lictor arms, because they're, uh, you know, you'd be catching things in between them. But on this one, it's on that one, it's not the the assimilator. It's not. Why they've done that, I'm not sure. But to be fair, I'm not sure why they've done two different uh, waist options. It might be these little uh, nubs, but one of them did look a little bit chunkier on those waist options. So, um. Oh well, there's your base, your 100mm base, big chunky base, 
for a big chunky model. I know there's people complaining about it's not as big as it should be, but look, it's the biggest plastic kit we've had for Tyranids. So, you know, if, if you're really that displeased with it, stay tuned to the channel because I've got some ideas about, you know, uh, attempting to, you know, make him a little bit more intimidating. He's already intimidating. She's already intimidating. I don't know. It's an non emissary, you know. But yeah, if you go by the weapon options on the back of it, you can see for the emissary, you've got your, your huge scything talons. Uh, you've got your rending claws, monstrous rending claws. Uh, you've got your psychic uh, long-range attacks. And then for the assimilator... Um, yeah, the, the, the first one, the ranged attack, is actually the harpoons in his chest. And then the second attack is the scything talons and rending claws. And then the third attack is these harpoons in the chest again. Um, so yeah, a bit weird. I thought these strange rending claws would be the harpoons, but apparently not. However... What it does say to me is that if anyone's got a Forge World Dimacheron, even though Dimacheron's now in the Legends, you can still run one. You can't buy him. You can run one if you've got one. You could run it as a known assimilator rather than a Dimacheron. Not sure what the stats would be like. Uh, I'd have to look into that. But yeah, you've got options for it still if you want to run it in a. Uh, you know, in a, a proper tournament and stuff like that. You don't have to, you know, you, you can run it in your friendly games as a Dimacaron, but in like a tournament setting, you won't be able to use it because it's Legends now, so you'd uh, be able to run it as a non-assimilator instead if you fancied, because they've got the whole, the uh, the chest cage kind of harpoony kind thing. Uh, and they've got massive uh, scything talons as well. So yeah, you've got options still. Um, and to round off, to be honest, uh, that's the non-emissary itself, and the sprue for the non-emissary. However, Games Workshop have been doing this recently. Obviously, with the release of the Leviathan box set, we got a brand new Screamer Killer, which was based on the old Screamer Killer. And then we got the Neuro Tyrant, which looks very much like the old... Um, zone throw up model, obviously with less legs and stuff like that, but that same kind of uh, crowned carapace that it's got. Now, I'd argue the known emissary has been inspired by the old Hive Tyrant. I think it's third edition Hive Tyrant. Well, I found my old codex that I got. I'm pretty sure this is third edition, but this is my old Tyranids codex. Look how small it is as well. You know, you just needed the core rules and a codex and you could play a game. Didn't need, you know, like tons of books, which is how it got at one stage. However, in this, you might be able to see it there. But the Hive Tyrant had a totally different uh, design. It, it looked like it was inspired very much by the, uh, the Alien Queen from Aliens. Um... Try and find it just on its own somewhere, maybe. Uh, there's a winged hive tyrant there. Here we go. Painting large tyranids. And there we go. There's your hive tyrant. That's your design for your hive tyrant. I used to love this design. The only problem was it was a part metal and part plastic kit, if I'm not mistaken. Like the uh, the monstrous scything talons kit were, were plastic arms that you had to stick onto a metal kit. Um, but I loved the, you know, how it looked it, like something from Aliens. Um, got three different versions of it here. This this is a High Fleet uh, Behemoth. Uh, you've got High Fleet, is that Gorgon? And then another High Fleet down here, which is a really cool design. Uh, would take you quite a bit longer to uh, make anything with it though. Now, I always wanted to get this Hive Tyrant, but I never did. And going through what I found, uh, 
there's actually a like a, a family tree in a way here we go which i'll try and zoom in quickly for this one here we go try and get it up there now this is kind of like a tyrannid fam family tree kind of going through all the things that are here and you start obviously the the big bad is the known queen itself then it goes to down to something called a dominatrix well i'm not sure we've ever seen a dominatrix in any of you know uh, model wise lore or anything like that so really well it might be something but at the same time what we have now this known emissary and assimilator pretty much fits the role of what a dominatrix would have been really because it's higher up than the hive tyrant that we've got here then we've obviously got those tyrannid warriors and stuff like that you've got your lictor carnifex biotime for some reason you've got your raveners do prefer the uh, the look of the the newer raveners so they are more warrior styled um again this is what used to, this is what they used to say back in the day that some tyrannid biomorphs were actually due to uh alien dna so uh, gene stealers were they used human dna to make gene stealers and biovore was made with orc dna um well in that old model you could argue that in this newest model they've brought out uh definitely not because it looks like a big spider then you had your zone for up which was uh, had eldar dna and tyrant guard used astartes well astartes dna is going to be the same as human dna they just have extra you know um they've got extra things so that, that's a weird kind of reach there um but also what you've got in this one is you've got the first mention of yvonne ryan's leaper which we just got in uh in Leviathan, uh, Von Ryan's Leapers, which, to be honest, I love the models. I think they're brilliant. But now we've also got the new Lictors and the Death Leapers, and we've got us, our new Hormagaunts and Termagants. Uh, no new Gargoyles just yet, but the Gargoyles aren't that bad of a kit anyway. Um, but yeah, I just thought, I thought it was interesting, after I'd found this, to go back and kind of have a look at some of the inspiration that Games Workshop had for this new range of Tyranid models via this really old 3rd edition, I'm pretty sure it's 3rd edition, Codex, which I actually found in a, a box. Uh, I was looking for something else and I found my Codexes and I was like, oh, bloody hell, yeah, I'll have a look through these again. Um, but yeah, uh, to be honest, the, the new versions of the Carnifexes I much prefer rather than these old ones yeah um yeah I, i'd even I know, I know a lot of people don't like the new screamer killer but i'd argue that the new screamer killer looks better than these old carnifexes by far um but yeah oh look there you go there's there's an old biovore um yeah I know there's some people who don't like the new look of it being quite insectoid and spidery, but I, I quite like it. And the new Tyrant Guards that we've got, obviously not new through the, the new range refresh. They've been out for a while, but a miles better than these old ones. These, you know, just a bit silly. Anyway, going through all that, and oh, they even got a bit of a look at the old sprue there. Well, old sprue. How much space is in that sprue compared to the new sprues that we've got? Even compared to the non-emissary sprue. I mean, that's just like a weapon sprue, but compare it to a non-emissary sprue. There's literally zero wasted space on this. So yeah, whoever designs the sprues for uh, Games Workshop, uh, they're doing a much better job nowadays. An absolutely cracking job. Anyway, sorry about that. I went on a bit of a random tangent, uh, mainly because I found my old Tyranid Codex, so uh, I was quite excited for that. Um, and it's just nice kind of reminiscing, really, and kind of thinking about where all the, uh, the, the inspiration for these new Tyranid biomorphs came from. Um, I think the Non-Emissary itself is an absolutely beautiful model. And 
I can't wait to build it. And I'll be doing a build video when I get around to it as well. Um, but I'll also be, like I said earlier in the video, I'll be uh, trying out some things to try and make it a little bit more intimidating. Uh, it's probably not going to get to a night size, but it'll be a little bit bigger than what it is now through a couple of, you know, little tricks and stuff like that. Um, but, you know, stay tuned. Uh, that'll be coming up oh, soon. Uh, tell me what you think in the comments. Like and subscribe. Uh, much love. I'll see you in a bit.